do Quarto de Continuidade ao evento desta tarde, convidamos o professor Dr. Jorge Romano para anunciar o palestrante. Boa tarde, boa tarde a todos. Boa tarde, Yes, thank you very much. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be here uh, celebrating the 10th anniversary of uh, this Universität Federal, the Do ABC, which is, I have heard it in the uh, lunch break from uh, Rector uh, uh, Capelle, a very modern uh, university. So it's very interesting also for us to learn from this university. And uh, my talk uh, is about social innovation and the role of, so of universities uh, in uh, those social innovation processes and I 
try to uh, also uh, present the results of uh, the project that was already mentioned, the SR Drive project, which is, I would say, the largest global research project in the field of social innovation funded by the European Union with 25 partners from all parts of the world. And um, my topic, uh, my, my main topics will be that I would outline the main characteristic of a new paradigm of innovation, touch upon the increasing relevance of social innovation as a specific type of innovation, provide a short overview of global project uh, as a drive and define major challenges regarding the promotion of social innovation and the specific role of universities. But I would like to start with a few remarks uh, on my university and the region where I come from because I think there were a lot of things that are similar to the region here and the university here. Uh, uh, I come from Dortmund, uh, which uh, is a, a city in the Ruhr area. The Ruhr area is a, a densely populated area in Germany with five million people. It's not so much like the area here, Sao Paulo, but five million people is a lot for Germany, I have to say. <laughs> and uh, um, it is an, an area which has a metropolitan character, but uh, it's a polycentric area with a lot of cities within it's not one center it's a lot of cities and communities that worked there. and Dortmund uh, used to be uh, the engine of the German economy uh, and uh, the heart of the industrial society with a lot of uh, coal uh, mines steel factories and also what is very important beer breweries not so good beer like Brahma I think uh, but also still good German beer and um, uh, this was in the 50 and 16s uh, of the last century a very important part of German economy, uh, but uh, has gone through a lot of changes within the last uh, 20 or 30 years. And uh, it uh, has become a location for technology and science, but also a region with a lot of unemployment and uh, social problems. So that is something that we just try to cope with the uh, structural changes, but still have a lot of problems and a long way to go. Uh, being in Brazil, I think I also have to mention that uh, Dortmund has a very famous uh, soccer club, Borussia Dortmund, which is, uh, I would say, the best, but uh, obviously the second best in Germany uh, behind uh, Bayern Munich. But it's also a very famous uh, football uh, club in uh, Europe. And every Saturday, uh, 80,000 people are uh, there, supporters are there. And this, uh, you see the supporters, and that in Germany is called the Jello Wall because they are so strong and give so much support to uh, the soccer team from Borussia Dortmund. But uh, even uh, maybe a little bit more important uh, than the soccer club, as I think, uh, is the uh, TU Dortmund University, which uh, is a very important uh, success factor for the structural change in uh, the last years. And as uh, uh, Universität Federal uh, ABC, it's also a quite young uh, university, uh, not as young as uh, uh, the Federal University ABC, but also young. It was founded in 1960 and with 300 professors, uh, 7,000 employees and more than 32,000 students, it's a very important uh, university in the region and it uh, has 16 faculties in the field of engineering and natural science and also in social and cultural science. The university itself is part of a dense network of uh, universities and research institutes in the whole region. And Stefan Hollensteiner, who made the contact to uh, Klaus Capelle, uh, who invited me, uh, thank you for that, uh, is head of the liaison office of these uh, universities of the Ruhr region here in uh, Brazil, in Rio, and I think in Sao Paulo, uh, both uh, cities. And um, these universities, uh, the four or three universities that we have in the uh, Ruhr region have more than 100,000 students and uh, are a very important factor uh, for the development of the region. So, my institute was already, already mentioned a very difficult name, I think, for everyone uh, apart from the Germans. Sozialforschungsstelle Dortmund uh, is one of the uh, largest and most traditional institute of social science in the field of labor 
and innovation in Germany. It's not only older than the university because it was founded in 1946, but it's also older than the Federal Republic of Germany, which was founded in 1947. So it's a very traditional institute with 35 scientists uh, which are involved in research, consulting and evaluation, focusing on uh, different topics regarding the social innovation and the world of labor. And uh, we also try to have a modern research profile that aims at actively connecting science and practice. So we do not want to be in an ivory tower isolated uh, from uh, the society and from the region, but uh, we try to work together with practitioners and uh, we are situated in an old coal mine uh, that uh, was the last uh, working coal mine in Dortmund and since 1996 our institute is after the coal mine has been rebuilt. We are not uh, uh, under earth but we are working uh, <laughs> above the earth, uh, but still it's an old coal mine field so uh, we work together there with companies, politicians and association in regional and transnational networks. We have a lot of uh, research areas, uh, focus on labor related things, uh, uh, management, uh, consulting uh, is a very important point, innovation studies, innovation policies in different fields uh, and uh, also regional cooperation and network management is very important because we also feel responsible for the development of our region and therefore we had to also make research on how to be very successful in that. We also uh, have a lot of European projects uh, in the field of social innovation. We have seven uh, projects in the framework programs of the European Union which cover different fields of social innovation uh, from our project ESA Drive, uh, as I already mentioned, to different things like uh, ICT, ICT learning and inclusion for young unemployed or economic underpinning of social innovation and different topics that we try to cover. We also have a lot of um, cooperation with Latin America, only to let you know one uh, seminario that we did last year together with our partner, the University of Talca in Chile, in Santiago de Chile, but we also have connections to Colombia and to other parts. But we unfortunately until now do not have so much uh, cooperation with Brazil, but I think we will change that uh, until today and uh, I will make a few seminarios uh, here around uh, uh, within the next day so that we will really build up our cooperation contacts to Brazil. We're also trying to build up a center for advanced studies in Latin America. We applied uh, for uh, this project. We are not sure if we are successful, but if we are successful, we'll, we'll have a center for advanced studies in uh, Talca, in Chile, which is open for cooperation with other partners in Latin America and which focus on cross-disciplinary uh, work together and also interdisciplinary work. That is also something that is very important for us, not to be in the silos of uh, sociology uh, and engineers, but also to work together. That is something very important. And this, in this center, we cover the field of education and communication. I think education is also a very important topic here in uh, the Universität Federal. Um, so that was a short overview about uh, the TU Dortmund University and also my institute. Uh, but now I would like uh, to come to the main topic of my presentation, uh, the social innovation topic. And if we talk about innovation, we normally talk about the astounding effects of technological innovation, the steaming engine, the iPhone, the computer, every uh, thing that is an artifact that we uh, put a lot of hopes in that it should help us to uh, uh, solve the great societal problems. And so a lot of um, innovation politics focus on this technological innovation. For example, the German uh, high-tech strategy, which is the central strategy, which was the central strategy, I have to say, uh, of the German government, says that emerging technologies are the basis for new products processes and services which can contribute to mastering current societal challenge. And then it says without them, without technological, without technological innovation would be unthinkable today. 
And I think that's not true. I think uh, we need technologies, uh, but there are a lot of uh, uh, innovations uh, which cannot be covered by uh, technologies where we need other forms of innovation. But this understanding of innovation is not only uh, founded in Schumpeter's idea of economic theory of innovation, but also in the ideas of Vannevar Bush, who was uh, the uh, consultant of uh, uh, President Roosevelt uh, within the Second World War. And uh, there in the Second World War, there was a strong cooperation between uh, military uh, politics and uh, also economy. And then he had uh, to uh, say to the president, what can we do to uh, make this really good experience for us also in a uh, world after the Second World War true. And uh, Vannevar Bush then presented a report uh, that it was called Science, the Endless Frontiers, that was said that the government should accept new responsibilities for promoting the flow of new scientific knowledge and the development of scientific talent in our use. These responsibilities are the proper concern of the government for they vitally affect our health our jobs and our national security. But this report only focused on uh, natural science and engineering. It doesn't focus on social science and also humanities. And I think also social science and humanities can do a lot uh, to uh, help us to cope with these great societal challenges. And we also know that uh, Technology innovation does not only solve problems, but also uh, has a lot of societal uh, uh, side effects that uh, there are a lot of problems connected to uh, technology innovation. And there are, at the same time, a lot of uh, social problems where we cannot have a, a technological uh, a solution. For example, uh, to uh, have a solution for the migrant crisis in, 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 in Europe. There is no technological solution. We have to find new ways of behavior and uh, new, societal, uh, new societal solutions to that. So uh, I agree to the Vienna Declaration that uh, summarized the result of a conference uh, that we organized uh, five years ago where 350 researchers from all around the world come to Vienna and uh, think about the future uh, challenges of innovation research. And they say that the tracks of international research on innovation demonstrate that the technology-oriented paradigm shaped by the industrial society does not cover the broad range of innovations indispensable in the transition from an industrial to a knowledge and service-based society. Such fundamental societal changes require the inclusion of social innovation in a paradigm shift of the innovation system. And the main characteristic of this new innovation paradigm can be described as the opening of the innovation process to society, alongside not only universities and uh, enterprise and companies build uh, important actors in the innovation processes, but also citizens, social movements can contribute to innovation processes. And concepts like uh, co-creation, open innovation, and always global knowledge sourcing, public sector innovation, they focus on special aspects of this new innovation paradigm. Technology plays a very important role in this new innovation paradigm, but no longer as the only driver of innovation, but as an enabler of new social practices. And this is also the background that we find a lot of exciting examples uh, of social innovation projects and initiatives that has developed in the last uh, decades. Uh, maybe you know Mohamed Yunus, who was the founder of the Grameen Bank and uh, someone that really tries to develop the microcredits that should help poor people to uh, really be economic successful. And he's also the winner of the uh, Peace Nobel Award. Uh, there were a lot of uh, examples in Latin America, I only mentioned one, Techo para mi país. A lot of examples that try to fight against uh, extreme poverty. I think also in Brazil there are a lot of examples of social innovation initiatives. But also in countries like Germany we have those things like urban gardening, car sharing and uh, corporate social responsibility that uh, also focus on special social innovation that have been very successful and that spread through uh, the different societies on the world level. 
The idea of social innovation is also gaining awareness in politics. So we also find a lot of uh, uh, different politics that try to integrate social innovation in uh, their strategy. For example, when uh, Barack Obama was elected the first time, he, all, he uh, established the Office of uh, Social Innovation in the White House and also um, had a fund for social innovation uh, to uh, fight against poverty and in try to develop including inclusive education, healthcare and economic. And um, I will show a few other examples later. So we have now a uh, high expectation that are connected to the field of social innovation. That is a tech cloud from the Young Foundation that plays a very important role in the development of a social innovation strategy in the European Union. And you find very, very different things that are connected to social innovation, from the fair trade to microcredits, carbon trading, and so on. And so uh, we may say that social innovation is a term that almost everybody likes. But nobody is quite sure what it means. And that's a problem if you try to develop a comprehensive innovation strategy and uh, to uh, also conduct research on social innovation. And that sets the scene for uh, our global research project, the Asset Drive project, that has three major objectives. That is to advance an understanding of social innovation, leading to a comprehensive uh, new innovation paradigm. The second uh, um, objective is to undertake European and a global mapping of social innovation, trying to better understand uh, the world of social innovation in the different world region, and I will present uh, some major results, and also, also ensuring relevance for policymakers and practitioners uh, by giving policy recommendations uh, to in the field of social innovation. The main resource of this project uh, is the uh, global consortium of uh, more than 15 partners in different parts of the world and also a high-ranked advisory board uh, that uh, help us to really develop a strategy and to understand better the world of social innovation. So in Latin America, ECLAC uh, uh, is partner here in our project that is the Economic Commission for Latin America and the Caribbean for the UN. So as a drive analyzes the potential of social innovation in different policy fields, the main policy fields in the European Union, though it's education, it's employment, it's environment and climate change, it's energy supply, it's transport and mobility, and if I understand that right, it was also just presented, uh, the concept uh, here. Uh, the, the, every, every big city has problems with uh, transport and mobility, so we need solutions and we cannot only trust in technological solutions. So also health and social care, poverty reduction and sustainable development are policy fields. And we try to understand uh, the potential of social innovation to cope with the great uh, great challenges in these policy fields, but also to understand better the constraints uh, that uh, hinder the potential of social innovation. With regard uh, to uh, the uh, social innovation research and also the traditional innovation studies, we developed uh, a theoretically sound concept of social innovation that uh, is based in social theory and uh, I don't want to go into it but I would say the most important thing that is for us social innovation is a new combination of social practices. It's not about the artifact, it's about the way we uh, work together, we uh, re organize our life, we consume. This is a point uh, what we think is very important and that will help us to uh, better satisfy uh, our needs or answering our problems and to become an innovation, not only to stay an invention, it has to be socially accepted and diffused widely throughout society or at least in societal sub-areas and uh, finally being institutionalized as a new social practice. So that's a little bit complicated. Complicated uh, to French researchers say in a better way, they say uh, social innovation can be understood as a process of collective creation in the course of which the members of a population learn, that means invent and establish new ways of playing the social game of collaboration and conflict in a word, a new social practice and in the course of which they acquire the necessary abilities 
to do this. And together with our expert and uh, the background of this definition, we uh, try to understand how the development of social innovation is and we also cover the different world region. And you see that social innovation is a concept that is also used in nearly every world region. We find it in Latin America, we find it in North America, we find it in Europe, we find it in, in uh, Asia, we find it in Australia and in all the world regions you find the concept of uh, social innovation. There is a special focus in our European project on Europe, but that doesn't mean that Europe is the center of social innovation. We also have really a lot of uh, examples here in Latin America, but you see that in every world region you find uh, projects and initiatives that work with the concept of social innovation. And we not only find social innovation in every world region, but also in every policy field. So social innovation is much more than to fight against poverty. It's also something that is important to develop and new ways of energy supply, new ways of transport and mobility. And we find a wide range of uh, innovations with a strong relationship to social demands, unmet social needs and societal changes. And we also may say that social innovation is much more than social entrepreneurship, which is very important in, in, in North America, where they focus a lot on social entrepreneurship. Uh, but uh, when we see the uh, types of partners that are involved in those initiatives, we see that uh, there are NGOs, NPOs, very important. Also the public body, ministries, play a very important role in the social initiatives and also private companies play a very important role. It is surprising for us that universities and research institutes do not play a very important role. Then if you would do the same um, survey with technological innovation, you would see that universities are, I think, the major player in this game. But universities and research institutes are not uh, in that, at that time, really engaged and involved in those projects. Only a few of them, only some very important, uh, interesting uh, examples of them, but that is a problem. I'll come back to that uh, in a few minutes. So we see that uh, there is a lot uh, of cross-sector collaboration. Most of the initiatives work together between civil society and private uh, uh, economy and public, uh, public uh, bodies. So it is very important that the initi initiatives work together and cross the borders and silos of different societal sub-areas. We also see that uh, asking for the cross-cutting themes of the initiatives, that empowerment is a very important point. So social innovation is not solving problems for someone, for the poor, but together with them. It is about uh, involving the people to find their own solution and to be integrated and active in these processes and projects. And that is very important and that's also very important uh, that you see that human resources and knowledge play a very important role. And uh, that is something that we think is uh, that we have to keep in mind. But there are different types of uh, user involvement. We find uh, users that uh, provide special knowledge or that uh, provide solutions or being co-creators or also uh, being adapters of new solutions. So they have different roles in this field of social innovation. We also see that uh, there are a lot of barriers that hinder social in in innovation initiatives to be successful. The main barrier that was uh, um, named was funding. We have, for example, in Germany uh, and in Europe, a lot of money that is spent for technological innovation. Uh, it's so many money, but you do not have uh, a lot of programs that really focus also on social innovation. So it is about funding, but it's not only about funding, it's also about a lack of personnel, it's about later restrictions that make uh, social innovation initiatives uh, uh, difficult to, to unfold their potential and others. A last slide from this global mapping um, that uh, we also ask what are the uh, intentions of these uh, uh, different initiatives and we see that the most uh, initiatives work on the social demands may also work on a local level on a local community really to try to solve a local problem. Uh, uh, 
few more also work on the societal challenge so to have in mind that we if we solve a, a local problem also may contribute to a better uh, uh, climate uh, climate change processes uh, but only a few of them uh, try really to have a systemic change a transformative change to a sustainable society in their minds and that is something uh, that is uh, also a problem uh, if social innovation do not want only repair some problems but really would like to uh, have a broader change in their mind. If only uh, one uh, slide about uh, social innovation in Latin America. I think you are the experts here. I only would like to quote that what uh, ECLAC uh, tells us in their special uh, uh, part of the uh, review of different world regions. They say that uh, Latin America and the Caribbean have uh, gone through an explosion of social innovation processes and initiatives. There's a lot of social innovation in Latin America and uh, they believe that that is due to the lack of the welfare state and also of the limited action of the state uh, regarding uh, the basic needs of its population. So uh, they also say that communities play a very important role uh, because the state uh, level is uh, missing and uh, they say that social innovation mostly comes from the communities and uh, the civil society. Maybe you can give your experience what, what uh, happens in the field of social innovation in Brazil. I would be very interested in that. So given the results from the global mapping and the different uh, policy and world region report, we think that uh, there's on the one hand an increasing importance of social innovation, but on the other hand uh, there is a lot to do to really unfold the potential of social innovation and uh, in the social innovation research and the different project there is one major question that is that we need to understand the conditions under which social innovation develop flourish and sustain and finally lead to social change that means what we would say we have to create an ecosystem of social innovation but already uh, nicolas machiavelli a very important uh, european philosopher that 500 years ago there is nothing more difficult to plan more doubtful of success nor more dangerous to manage than the creation of a new order of things. Maybe you feel that in the moment in uh, Brazil, I don't know. Whenever these enemies have the ability to attack the innovator, they do so with the passion of partisans, while the others defend him sluggishly so that the innovator and his party alike are vulnerable. So, and to overcome these problems, we think that uh, we have some challenges uh, that we have to face. And uh, one challenge is to redraw the boundaries between the different societal sub-areas. So we have to combine the potential of social innovation in the social economy and the civil society in business firms and the state. We also have to promote alliances between universities, companies and the state around social innovation. So in Germany, every university has a department for technological uh, transfer and every uh, city has a, a science park. But we do not have really uh, centers for social innovation. That is what we also need. Uh, and we need the best way would be to uh, combine those two things. We have to uh, empower the people, that is very important, uh, because social innovation is about uh, enhancing the innovation capacity of the whole society, not only on special groups, and therefore we have to empower the people and we have to think innovation from the bottom up. Uh, Second important thing is that we have to create an ecosystem of social innovation. We have to develop alliances between the different actors, civil society, public sector. That is very important. And uh, therefore, it is very important to have networks as a success factor for social innovation. Uh, and networks can be described as one of the most important features of the new innovation paradigm, a result of a profound transformation of the innovation process. Also, Mohamed Yunus, who was one of the most successful social innovation innovators, says that uh, most social business are likely to originate with one person or perhaps with a small group of people, friends, work colleagues or people with a shared interest in a particular social problem. Within such a small group, you may not have all the expertise experience, ideas and resources needed to make 
your social business in idea into a reality. Don't let that stop you. Look around for others you can partner with. So networks is very important. We also have to find uh, new ways of diffusion and scaling up. That means that we have to organize learning processes, share our knowledge, and also have to develop a knowledge bank, maybe, what we do. And we also have to, uh, have to identify venture capital, not only for technological innovators, but also for social innovators. Last but not least, we need something like a social innovation policy, because social innovation requires also appropriate social innovation policies, and many social inventions are hindered by traditional approaches in public and policy. And we think that uh, it's really important for policymakers to understand how to involve and make use of the participation of citizens to serve the public good. And we also uh, could see this problem uh, within the uh, SR drive global mapping, where we see that in the most policy fields, as I already mentioned, there is a strong need for social innovation in the seven policy fields. But on the other hand, there is no clear concept of social innovation, and that makes it very difficult to uh, bring it on the political agenda. But nevertheless, uh, that happens. We have a lot of initiatives in Europe and uh, in different parts of the world that uh, try to integrate social innovation in a comprehensive social innovation strategy. And uh, for example, the uh, last president of the European Union, Manuel Barroso, said that creativity and innovation in general and social innovation in particular are essential factors for fostering sustainable growth, securing jobs and increasing competitive abilities, especially in the midst of the economic and financial market crisis. And uh, therefore, the uh, really very large uh, European research program, Horizon 2020, says that uh, they uh, promote innovations and they fund innovations, not only uh, in the field of technology, but also innovations that are non-technological innovation and social innovation, and that are also very important. So our seven projects were all uh, funded in the European uh, Framework Program Horizon 2020. We also find some uh, initiatives uh, in Latin America. I have already mentioned that uh, in the lunchtime, uh, Colombia is a very good example, not only because they uh, really tried to uh, uh, promote peace in the country, which was really uh, many, many years uh, really uh, in this uh, bad uh, conflict between the different partners, but they also uh, see that technological and uh, economic innovations are not enough to overcome extreme poverty and they developed the uh, national strategy uh, for social innovation and they founded also a center for social innovation uh, in uh, Bogota a few years ago. And uh, I just started with a German high-tech strategy as a bad example, but there is a new high-tech strategy and that is a good example. Uh, and uh, the new high-tech strategy said that we employ a comprehensive term of innovation which covered not only technological but also social innovation and we include society as main actor. That is very important uh, from a point of view that Germany is very, uh, um, uh, very focused on engineering and they say we need a different high-tech strategy and we have to see that social innovation plays a very important role. And I just come from this uh, Congress, uh, sorry, it's in German, uh, that uh, took part uh, two days ago together with uh, the Ministry, uh, uh, Johanna Wanka, uh, uh, which uh, is about uh, the social innovation and uh, uh, innovation for society in which, in, uni uh, in which social innovation plays a very important role. And the Ministry funded this uh, conference and the main focus was on the role of universities uh, to really unfold the potential of social innovation. So, uh, there's also a growing infrastructure of social innovation. I talked about the different uh, cities in Germany that have all the technology departments and technology uh, um, centers, but uh, if you take a closer look uh, to the development in the last uh, 20, 30 years, there are a lot of centers of social innovation were established in different parts of the world. Uh, some of them were uh, 
established from university with a more research focus and other were developed uh, from social entrepreneurs that really try to help social innovators in a different region uh, to really overcome uh, the problems and to uh, give them support. For example, the Center for Social Innovation at the Stanford University, which is maybe the most important one. A young Foundation in, in Europe is a very important one. And also the Waterloo Institute for Social Innovation and Resilience in Canada and many others. I stopped there 2012, uh, but uh, there were a lot of more uh, centers that was founded within the last years. And I think it's really uh, something that has to be done, that we really need those centers for social innovation. So, last good news is that we also find a growing global research community in social innovation. Uh, we started with the Vienna uh, conference uh, five years ago, I already mentioned that, and uh, now we have a lot of uh, cooperation between the different institutes, a lot of conferences. We have every two years uh, a global conference on social innovation. The next one will be in Brussels 2017, uh, organized by our SI Drive project, and we really work on the field of social innovation. And I just will skip a few of my slides uh, to uh, end with uh, a last quote from the Vienna uh, Declaration that uh, says that uh, the uh, most important uh, and urgent innovation in the 21st century will take place in the social field and that open up uh, the possibility and also the necessity for social science and uh, humanities to find a new role and that is very important and as I heard uh, here in, uh, in this university uh, there is already a strong cooperation between social science, humanities, engineering science and I think that is the way we have to do it. Thank you very much for your attention. It's not a representative, uh, it's not a representative, but it's about the partners. So we have a strong focus on Europe because it's a European project and the European Union is very much interested in the different uh, region in Europe that's also very different. And they say, but we also want to have some examples in other, uh, and so we have a selected. It's not that uh, it's anything saying that in Europe are more social innovation initiatives than in, uh, in the United States, not meant. I would first say that uh, I, I also would say that the concept of transfer is a problematic concept also in technological innovation. I would say that we need to uh, think about a new way of knowledge production that from the beginning tries to include people from uh, not only from universities but also from companies and uh, also the users so these all the concepts like co-creation, open innovation, they try to include users and try to uh, focus on the knowledge of the people from the practice and to integrate that. 
And I think also in technological innovation, we need to have a stronger focus on integrating uh, integrating practitioners in those projects. In the field of uh, uh, social innovation, it's somehow the other way around because universities and research institutes have, do not produce a lot of knowledge in the field of social innovation, but it comes from the civil society and uh, universities now try to uh, uh, get up with the knowledge and uh, try to learn from those civil societies and uh, practitioners of social innovation and that uh, has led to a problem that uh, the practitioners, that the people that really promote social innovation and in practice, they don't want to work together with universities because they say they only come to get our knowledge, but we do not get any support. So I think that also there, from the other side, we also need integrating projects that produce knowledge, not only in the academic sense, but also knowledge that is useful for the practitioners. And that is really something where I think that needs, and that was the, the main topic of our conference in, in Berlin. And I was very, very uh, um, much, uh, you're surprised that the minister itself says, we do not know, we want to uh, uh, give money to social innovation and we want to help our universities, but we do not know how. So let's talk about new ways of uh, promoting social innovation. And we talked, for example, about design thinking as a way to collaborative knowledge production or transformative research and other ways to integrate from the beginning uh, practitioners and scientists in uh, projects to develop knowledge that is helpful not only for university but also for both. But the concept of transfer is a problem, I think. They were, they were also, so there were also uh, uh, examples in Africa. We have also partners in Africa, but not so much. We have partners in South Africa, for example, and in the uh, uh, northern uh, uh, states of Africa, like Egypt and so on. And uh, the point is, uh, the between, we do not have any partners, and that's difficult to have some uh, uh, initiatives if you do not have experts there in the, that region. But there is also a lot of uh, that. Also, a lot of social innovation initiatives in Africa. Sometimes they can't, 
well, they can't implement their ideas or their, their, their new practices because old traditional conservative institutions are very strong. Yeah. It's a right yeah. I think that that is a really important point. Uh, because that is also the main focus of the Ether Drive project, not to only see a single case of social innovation uh, driven by normally a, a, a very important uh, innovator like Mohamed Yunus and uh, then describe success factors. We say it's always about the context, so it is about the to understand the social innovation, you have to understand the policy field and you have the regional context in it, and then you can understand which hinders or which help to unfold the potential for social innovation. And politics, that is also a result of the project, can hinder social innovation because they, as you said already, the legal restrictions, for example, or uh, missing funding or all those things, but it can also promote social innovation. And we think that uh, we have the best impact of social innovation if policy, civil society, economy, and also uh, science and research work together and define their specific role. Policy cannot be the innovator, it cannot be do the experiments, but it should take up really successful experiments to make them, for example, to a law, uh, to give institutional support, scale them, uh, them up. Yeah, that is also something. So that is something, so it's totally right and uh, I wouldn't now uh, say it in a different way. I would not say let's uh, uh, bring down the welfare state in Europe to uh, promote social innovation. That wouldn't be the, the but you have to see the institutional context. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's right. Uh, how does uh, social innovation, how does social innovation uh, deal with the uh, reorganization of work? Because uh, there is a natural conflict between uh, workers' interests and the, the capital interests, how, how social innovation? Yeah, uh, we would say, for example, uh, if you if you say uh, workplace innovation is a concept of for social innovation in the organization, that is a European network that work in the field of social innovation. And what we would say is that we need, as in the social innovation field, at, uh, we need to 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 um, use the innovation potential from everyone in the company, not only from the management, not only from the engineers, but we have to integrate uh, and involve the workers in the field. We have to empower them uh, to be able to give their ideas and to be co-creative. So I think a good organization is an organization, a good company is a company where the, uh, the workers have also rights to say what they want. They can like uh, uh, bringing their ideas, they have influence and the manager listen to them. And we have also uh, structures that helps to do that. Like in Germany we have this coup determination for example that is also on a, a, a higher level in, in the steel industry where we have a, a institutionalized uh, cooperation between uh, the management and the representatives of the workers, the trade unions. And I think that is quite a success model. So German industry at least does quite well within the last uh, decades and I think that's also in, 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 in um, Northern Europe they are also very inno innovative and there is an, uh, a survey from, from uh, Lundwall, uh, he's a very important uh, uh, researcher in the field of innovation studies and he said that the countries where there is a high worker involvement, they are also successful in innovation.
depois que eu vi a inglês com sotaque alemão, vocês vão ouvir o português com sotaque alemão. Bom, estamos chegando ao fim da semana das celebrações do nosso décimo aniversário, o décimo aniversário da UFPC. Nós tentamos apresentar nesses cinco dias uma programação bastante rica, diversificada, dinâmica, como, é, como queremos que seja o UFPC, rica, dinâmica, diversificada. Nós tivemos, em cada um dos cinco dias da nossa semana de aniversário, tivemos uma atividade cultural, quer dizer, em quatro já tivemos, hoje ainda teremos que a pouco teremos o corpo da UFBC. Uma atividade cultural, artística, por dia. Nós tivemos, agora sim, passado, em cada um dos cinco dias, a palestra, uma palestra de uma pessoa de importância nacional ou internacional, como é o caso do nosso convidado de hoje. E nós também tivemos, em cada um desses cinco dias, o lançamento de uma produção intelectual, uma produção acadêmica, como foi o caso do plano de logística sustentável do FPC, um plano que eu sei que já está sendo utilizado como modelo por outras universidades. Em cada um desses cinco dias, além dessa programação de três, ele de três elementos que se repetem, todos os dias tivemos todos os três elementos em cada um dos cinco dias nós também tivemos algumas atividades adicionais que não se encaixaram nesse esquema de 3 por 5 por exemplo a exposição sobre mulheres na UFPC por exemplo a mesa de dona sobre o projeto pedagógico da UFPC no, na qual participaram três dos nossos quatro ex-leitores por exemplo, hoje, a formalização, oficialização do nosso acordo com a EMPU, uma parceira importante na UFPC, inclusive no contexto da logística sustentável e no contexto da inovação social. Então, realmente foi um ambiente muito propício para oficializar essa parceria com a EMPU. Então, tivemos um, uma programação que eu espero que tenha sido uma interessante para todos e nós ganhamos um presente de aniversário ganhamos vários presentes de aniversário na verdade ontem ainda ganhamos presente da sessão incomodado de uma obra de, um, de um, dois artistas brasileiros importantes que foi seguido ao FDC, incomodado com a intermediação da Galeria Vermelho. Essa obra fica nesse momento, foi instalada no espaço dentro do Bloco A e a biblioteca, e onde ela vai ser uma, a primeira peça do que nós esperamos que no futuro se torne um museu ao ar livre na UFPC. Teremos nos próximos, nos próximos meses, uh, receberemos outras obras doadas ou seguidas por outros artistas importantes. Então, o ano, então ganhamos um presente de aniversário tangível nessa obra de arte e também na promessa de haver, de haver, de haver outras doações. E ganhamos um presente de aniversário não tão tangível, mas igualmente maravilhoso, que a publicação do ranking universitário do Transcire Education foi publicado na última quarta-feira, já está na mídia, inclusive na mídia nacional e internacional. Um, a UFPC, pela primeira vez, entrou nesse ranking, que apenas olha, um, uh, classifica as 980 melhores universidades do mundo. Agora, só entrando nesse ranking significa que estamos entre as 980 melhores do mundo. Esse ranking é organizado por faixas, então seria, era de se esperar que uma universidade que entra nesse ranking entraria pela faixa de, uh, 
de entrada, que corresponde aos posições 800 a 980. Mas não só entramos, nós pulamos a faixa de entrada, já estamos na faixa de 600 a 800. Nessa faixa, estar nessa faixa significa que nós estamos empatados com outras instituições, mas já estamos na, no grupo um, uh, das três melhores, uh, nós somos a terceira melhor universidade brasileira e a melhor federal, também empatado com algumas outras universidades federais. Então, esse reconhecimento, depois de ter a nossa existência, nós começamos literalmente de zero. Aqui tinha uma garagem municipal e no nosso campus de Salganão só tinha grava. Literalmente de zero. E depois de 10 anos, fomos internacionalmente reconhecidos como a terceira melhor universidade do Brasil, a melhor federal. Esse foi um presente de aniversário, um aniversário fantástico, um reconhecimento da comunidade acadêmica. E vocês aqui representam a comunidade acadêmica. Acho que é o momento de dizer parabéns, comunidade acadêmica da UFBC, parabéns, alunos, docentes, PAs, terceirizados, estagiários, amigos, apoiadores, parabéns, UFBC.